Often in science, things happen by coincidence. I was in the right place, at the right time, enjoy the vibrant research field. This is a part of why I love science. Anything can happen. We could find truly fascinating results or make a real breakthrough, one that could literally change the world. It might be tomorrow, or it might be the day after tomorrow. Or it might never happen, but it's okay too. I'm currently studying the way light interacts with things around us. Very small things, primarily made of metals. And if we go really small, go nanoscale, there are many completely unexpected things going on. When you see beautiful colors in a stained window, this is the light interacting with tiny particles of metal inside the glass. So the blues and the reds that they used in the Middle Ages were 14th century nanotechnology. They didn't know how it worked, it just did, producing all these colors. And now we can reproduce this process, controlling it on a very small scale. We use various methods and tricks to observe what really happens when the light hits the surface of the metal. From this point on, you can start doing some really interesting things. We want to know how optics function at the nanoscale and how the unique characteristic of the metamaterials can be tailored. Our goal is to create ultra-thin materials with many new exciting properties and functionalities. For instance, right now we are trying to make solar cells more efficient. If you add small metal particles to the silicon that the conventional solar cell is made of, you can actually improve the efficiency of the cell because these particles capture sunlight really well. So imagine how much potential these small metal particles have. In the near future, they could help to solve our planet's energy problems. Research in nano-optics is exciting because there are so many possibilities that open up. Take biosensors, for example. In the future, we might all have a small optical device next to our bed that can give us a complete diagnosis of our health condition from just a microscopic drop of blood. Then the question is, do we really want to know all this? On the other hand, if we could, for example, catch cancer development at an early stage without even having to visit the doctor, this technology could save lives. Another application might be in ultra-fast computer memory. With our research, eventually, you could probably operate your computer at the speed of light. And then, of course, you'd better use light for this. As a researcher, you can have all kinds of crazy ideas, but before you know, they become a reality. Both of my parents are physicists, so one might say that I was pre-programmed for this line of work. I joined the science faculty in my hometown back in Russia in the early 90s, when the Soviet Union just collapsed. At that time, working with science didn't seem like such a good idea as the government was struggling to feed the population and was unable to fund scientific research. I took extra courses so that I could join the Faculty of Architecture, and I still love graphic design, but I switched back to science eventually. My job really is a great energizer. There are always these pure moments of new knowledge from discussions with fellow researchers. Doing my research I feel part of something much bigger, something that could change the future and it might only be 10-20 years from now.